we do mantra, we do breath observation, we do pranayam. For what? To silence the mind. So when should we stop doing it? Until the mind is silent. But I don't think so when the, the track of Om stop. Did it say, open up your eyes? Did somebody say, now it is time to get up or something? No. That is the time to just be quiet and stay still. Not opening the eyes. Not doing anything. Not getting up. Not going out and doing something else. Actually, I would say, if you do half an hour of mantra, then stay another half an hour at least, if not, then at least 20 minutes, just silent. And see, has that mantra done any effect to the mind or not? Or your mind is still racing and running and going crazy? Say if you have just half an hour, then okay, do 20 minutes of mantra, but at least 10 minutes. Allow that mantra's effect to work on you. You have opened your eyes and then it's just waste of whole time. Then you are doing the same thing what those guys did, they, you know, do this Thousands of people, Ram, 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 and you are doing Om, 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 Om. The only thing is you are doing much synchronized, nice music track, nice ambience, you know. It's a good track. But if you are not relishing it, if you are not being silent, if you are not staying with it, then you are not gaining anything out of it. Actually, when you go in silence after that, that is very important part. And this whole mantra is actually to be done to arrive at that point where you can be silent. And your mind is not bothered because mind is feeling those vibes of the mantra. Allow it to sink in. Don't be in a rush to open your eyes. And in my experience, sometimes what doesn't happen in that half hour while doing the mantra, sometimes happens when you are not doing the mantra. Mysterious ways, very mysterious ways. So when you do it, do it very attentively and very correctly. But when you stop doing it, this is the important time. Where the mind might get the plunge. The mind may have that dip. You know the dip, like the head inside the water of rivers. Then it cannot speak. So having the dip is very important. Are you getting the point what I am saying? Do a mantra, do a pranayam, do a reading, you know, even if you are reading a book. You have say read five, six, eight, ten pages, close the book, close your eyes and sit. And relish that, allow it to seep in. Like, you know, your coffee takes time to brew. You put the beans, the powder, if you are making a filter coffee. You know how to make a filter coffee? Huh? What do you do? You put the boiling water in the jug which has those powder Sometimes there's a spout in, inside, you know, the funnel kind of thing is there. And you just allow it to sit there. You don't move it. 
and then you press it and then you pour it and then you have beautiful aroma coffee to drink. Similarly, the mantra has to be brewed. Do with the right method. Fill the funnel of your mind with the mantra and then shut all the orifices, you know, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ear. You don't want to do anything outside these openings. And move all energies inward. And let the mantra brew. That will give you a taste of something. It's a very subtle, very deep, but very important point. There are people who will say, do mantra all the time and there are people who would say, don't do any mantra and just observe the breath. You know, Anapan, Sati Yoga, all Buddhist meditations are like that. But this is a very subtle point which neither are explaining. So people are stuck. Some in mantra, some in just watching the breath. What for? You are doing what for? What is the objective? What is the goal? What is the point? Why are you doing it? So being in that very poignant moment, just still, just be in that. Maybe after five, ten minutes, I can't predict for how long, you have to see. You have to see. And then you will surely know that it's better now. Let's get up and do something else. Today no plunge happened. We'll try next time. <laughs> Unlucky day. Nothing happened. And then you do it again until that beautiful moment comes where mind goes into the zone of matvari re surat nirat bhai matvari re my all modifications of mind and all the dance of the mind all the thoughts and everything has gone into a silent zone or should I say into an intoxicated zone And it's a beautiful moment. And let me say you this also. Sometimes it's just the presence of the master and your mind can go into a dip. Not doing anything and mind goes silent. You did nothing. No mantra, no breath observation, no dhyana, no brumadhyay dhyana, nothing. You just were in the presence of a great master and the mind goes into silence. Bingo. Quiet. And hours flew. And there was no need even to change your legs. Nothing is hurting because mind is in some another zone now. And actually this is meaning of having darshan. This is what darshan means. Darshan doesn't mean just looking at Guru's face or body. Darshan means being in that presence, waiting for that magic to happen, where mind just automatically goes into silence. Ah, um, Teacher, uh, professors, uh, scholars may know more Veda than me. But he or she not be able to give you that 
magical moment which is beyond words. Because there is no role of words there. And this is one of the reasons that in history of spiritual masters and disciples, there have been events where a totally illiterate man meets the Guru, falls in love with the Guru, goes into Samadhi and becomes one with the Guru. Never did anything. But the mind kind of merged with the Guru's mind. So whatever Guru's mind had, went into his mind. You know, you wire money from here to there, country to country. And here the jnana gets wired. This is called heart to heart communion of disciple and Guru. It's a heart to heart magical communion. This is not something uh, which, which you can, you know, read and know or do some thesis and know. No, no, no. This is something very amazing. It's inexplicable. It's very transcendental. Many, many masters, you know, had such kind of disciples who were not very scholarly, who were not very, you know, elite, not very sharp, not very intelligent. And yet, they met the masters and they had this divine communion and they became one with the masters. And the mind went into such a silence area that the, the source of all knowledge is who? Parabrahma. And mind in that zone is in a way connected to those divine wisdoms. Which university did Kabir Sahib go? Which doctorate Sri Guru Nanak Dev had? Nothing, nobody, they didn't do anything. And yet they were so extraordinarily beautiful, eloquent personalities. So there has been this, this beautiful, you know, incidents and time to time I have been talking about many. Shams, Tabriz and Rumi, Guru Nanak Dev and Lehna, Kabir Sahib and Dharamdas, Rajab and Charandas Maharaj, Paltu and his Guru. You know, there are hundreds of such examples. They met the Guru, they saw the Guru, and their mind surrendered, and they became one with the Guru. That's it. Changed, transformed, never took years. Ah. Happened in a moment. So this very mind which you have, this very mind has the same base of Parabrahm like Kabir, like Guru Nanak, like Buddha, like Mahavira, like any great Guru. Mind is same, base is same. But you don't have the access, the mind is so clouded, is so wrapped up in its own stupidities and ignorances. So he's unable to make that divine contact.
the question came why the, the living guru is required because only a living guru can be a catalyst in between you and parabrahm for this reaction to happen you can hydrogen you can have hydrogen molecule you can have oxygen molecule but if there is no electricity as a catalyst nothing is going to happen So you need that catalyst and Guru is that catalyst. That is what Kabir Sahib is celebrating. Mary ab lagan lagi hai. Now I have that love, that passion, that surrenders. Now I have it. Indeed a moment of celebration. Because not everybody will have. Nobody knows how many hundreds of disciples Swami Ramanand had, but we have only memory of Kabir Sahib, born in 12th century. 12th century. And we still are rejoicing in his poetry, rejoicing in his songs, remembering him, learning from, getting inspiration, getting motivated. What a beautiful work we have in our hands. So whenever you sit, don't be in a rush to come out. Everything can wait, not this. Keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. Intuzar ki jo maza hai, wo lena chahi. Yaar aave na aave, intazar bar karar rehna chahiye. Wo kab aave, kya jante hai? Is liye intazar bar karar rehna chahiye. The waiting should be there. Who knows when? The beloved arrives with all the magic. Uh, in the end, one point more. This these things are actually, you know, like beauty of the flower. If you do a postmortem of this flower to know where the beauty is, would you get it? The beauty is in the wholesomeness of this flower. And if you cut it, take it in a chemistry lab, put it in a dish tray, take out all petals, break down to the molecules, <laughs> my beauty will be lost forever. So if you wish to relish beauty, you have to have the rose. You, you want those magical moments, you have to be close to the Guru, there is no other option. Those who run away from Guru, and these days because of YouTube and all these electronic gadgets, people think, oh we had this such song, oh we saw it there, on this, oh we know what you did, and we also know what you wore and everything, but my dear, you are not getting that magic. The internet still doesn't has that power to take that away from here to there via you know, satellites to your phones. Have to be there. That's enough for now.